TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see a little warning screen. Uh, you know, no explanation needed. Uh, Twitch.com is where you can catch a live if we do go live. And we also got Patreon that we watch five days per week. Uh, right now we got Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away season. This is the last season, actually. Season 5, episode 15, I believe. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. County court judgments against individuals in England and Wales rose to the highest level in over a decade during the first quarter of 2017. Nearly 300,000 judgments were issued during this period, marking a 35% rise from the previous year. Yeah, man, people getting broker. <laughs> and things are getting more expensive. In the first quarter of 2017, the total value of county court judgments against individuals in England and Wales was $462 million. I mean, pounds. Seven thirty AM. High Court enforcement agents Max Carraher and Steve Pinner are on their way to Fulham, West London. No cap, I hope to recover Max a debt of almost eight thousand pounds. Max, Max got to chill out this episode. Well, he was only igniting fires last episode. Owed to a firm of accountants. Okay, Max, we're uh, in Putney now. Where are we off to? But this will be no ordinary job. The debtor is a well-known personality. He's famous for being on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. He was also sent to prison for fraud. He had a fleet of Ferraris and he actually hid some of them. Why? To oh. claim on the insurance and got a huge amount of money and then he was found out and sent to prison. The debtor is Lord Charles Brockett. And Steve and Max are on their way to see him at his exclusive who? <laughs> penthouse apartment. So yeah, I will ring the bell for the concierge. Hello. Good morning, sir. We are High Court Enforcement Agents here with the High Court Ritz. Right, come into reception. Lovely. Thank you very much. The agents are buzzed in by security. They've got some penthouse suites up there. No cap. See, this is what I need to live in if I come to the UK. <laughs> this might be a little extreme, but like, things it got good security, boy. Good morning, sir. Are you the security here? I am. Hello. Not a no problem. problem. My name is Max Carraher. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. I'm here with my colleague Steve Pinner. We've got a High Court writ for one of your residents. Uh, who? Mr. Brockett. Mr. Brockett, can Absolutely. you mind if I give him a call? The security guard calls up to Lord Brockett's apartment. Of course they're not going to let him in. Oh, they why would you even waste your time calling? Oh, I've got people here from the High Court. Yeah, one second. It's just a family. Yes, not a problem. Yeah. Hi there. Who am I speaking to? I, I understand it's not a convenient moment, but unfortunately we're commanded here. We, we should explain that when we're upstairs. Cheers. Bye. Thanks ever so much, okay. sir. It appears that Lord Brockett is away and that his mother and stepfather-in-law are staying in the flat. But the agents have the right to remove goods to offset the debt, even yes. in his absence. Yeah. Oh, Good morning, madam. Home. Sorry to sorry to bother you. You've got to go through. Go through. But as Steve and Max nice. enter the flat, they're in for a surprise. Dang. The apartment is crammed with valuable antiques and artwork. 
When I walked into the flat, I thought I'd walked into a art gallery. I mean, there was very few. I'm not even gonna lie, this is somebody's crib. This look crazy. This look insane. Look how big this one. Spaces where there wasn't a picture or a painting or something. It was just crazy, phenomenal for where we were. The agents have all the leverage they need if Lord Brockett can't or won't pay. But now Max needs to find out where he is. We're here for Charles I ain't expected Brockett. to be that big. What did he connection with? We're enforcement agents. We have a high court writ here. Against him? Yes. And um, where is he at the moment, sir? They've gone to Cuba before. Oh. Yes, it went yesterday. Ah, OK. Would it be possible to get him on the phone? Um, they've got mobiles, yes. Excellent. So, what do we need to do? Give you his mobile? If you get him on the phone for me so we can speak to him, I think that's going to be the best I, I option. at the moment. It's three o'clock in the morning. I understand that Lord Charles is travelling and on holiday, but he has a high court writ that he needs to pay. If not, we'll be removing goods, and we don't want to do that. Well, I mean, how much do we have to pay? I mean, we, can we pay it? I need to confirm with him that we can speak to you about the details. It's not me being difficult. No, no, okay. Well, we can try and get it. Sure, it's just the Data Protection Act we can't say. No, that's all right. Man. So, thank you. W parents, man. The debtor's mother-in-law gets him on the phone. They're just trying to Hi. figure it out. Stella. Or W in-law. Um, good morning. Sorry to wait here in the middle of the night. I've got some gentlemen here from the High Court who need to speak to you. So I'll pass you over. We don't got money. Hello, sir. Is this Mr. Charles Brockett? Yes, it is. Yes, speaking. Hello, Mr. Brockett. We're enforcement agents and we've been sent here with a high... I'm not going to lie, that balcony is butt cheeks. Like, in comparison to the, the where how he living in this penthouse, I would expect this balcony to be like, oh, it do go into the next room. Okay. Never mind. Let me be quiet. This is beyond my pay grade. I caught it. Right. We need to collect a balance of £7,666 and 42 pence at this moment in time. Is there any way you're able to pay that, sir? Not at the moment, no. Not at the moment. Could you just confirm that you are not going to pay this balance? Yes, sir, I'm not because uh, the judge has asked me to ask for it to be set aside. It seems Lord Brockett has applied to have the case set aside. But as the application is still being processed, the High Court writ is active and must be resolved today. You were saying yes. about possibly removing some goods from here? Yes. Yes, but none of this stuff belongs to Lord Brockett. Okay. Yes, certainly. Hello, sir. Just so you are aware, the yeah. whole property and its contents are owned by the trustees of the First Lord Brockett's Will Trust. There's okay. There's no, nothing there uh, except for literally things like my toothbrush. Lord Brockett, I understand what you're saying. However, as long as you got the paperwork to prove that Lord Brockett, <laughs> we will be collecting. However, unless an original bill of sale can be provided, the onus of proof isn't on ourselves and we can indeed remove that asset. And unless we get payment, we will be removing them. Okay, um, I'll ring up for now and then come back to you. Not a problem. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Lord Brockett. Thank you. Whilst the agents wait for Lord Brockett to call back, Max and Steve start an inventory of goods they could seize if he can't prove they belong to the trust. Uh, about one of these paintings to get it done, probably. The assets of the last property are unbelievable. And for the agents, the flat is a gold mine. What do you know about art? <laughs> I know that it's in a gallery. <laughs> Steve, I know nothing about art. Unsure of the value of the paintings, Max and Steve turn their attention to the antiques. Ink pen set. Be so careful. I'm seeing these assets that Be careful. look like they've been in a museum for many years. Uh, it shocks me. I've never seen anything like that, and I've been to some nice places. This was... It was one of a kind. 20 minutes later, Lord Brockett hasn't called back. Right, Steve, at this moment in time, he's refused to pay. I think we'll get some contractors down. But then the security guard arrives together with Lord Brockett's son. Uh, I spoke to him and legally he said you've never got seven days notice or something and uh, legally you can't be taking anything out of the flat. A notification of uh, enforcement has been sent here. You can't just take stuff, surely? Yes, I can. I'm an enforcement agent. 
just then, Lord Brockett calls back. OK, so, so can I now tell you? Yes. We've got two gentlemen there. I've checked with council. Yes. They've asked you to leave the building. They're allowed to use whatever um, steps are necessary in law. Excuse me? Right, so you're saying that they can use force to remove us from the building? Yes, from the building. No, they're not. They're going to be arre- they'll be arrested if they lay a finger no. on us. With Lord Brockett now making direct threats against the agents... But can you please leave now? This case has taken a nasty turn. Max and Steve will have to... Anybody that wear their hat like this is not removing me from the building. I mean, it's going to be 100%. Your hat is meant to cover your forehead. If your for your forehead is cold, so why even wear it like that? It's just not happening. Use all their tenacity to complete the job peacefully. Eight. Well, I think stood if they lay a finger no. on us. But can you please leave now? Now, man. See, that's my problem. It would do me great pleasure to take Lord, Lord whatever stuff away. It's just like, you know what I'm saying? Who do you think you were talking to, buddy? (laughs) Max has got to make Lord Brockett understand that he has every right to stay in the flat and complete the enforcement. Right, I'm now going to start removing goods from your lounge, Okay. okay? They are going to stop you doing that. Believe you me, if they do, then they'll be arrested. Then by who? By who? The police. Can you hand the phone back to the gentleman? Yes, certainly. I know you're following orders from your boss. If, um, if you obstruct us, we have to call the police. With Max standing his ground, Lord Brockett tells his son he must let the agent stay. Now they must get this case back on track. We, we've been here for quite a long time now, so we are going to do a physical removal. What have you taken? Well, I identified the clock, the writing set. How do you know the value of what you've taken? We'll leave an inventory, madam. The auction, it gets about 10 to 20% of the actual value. Do we get this back ever? If, if the debt is paid for... We leave a ha- heirloom, we'll see you Debt doesn't discriminate between the rich and the poor. You could be at the top end of society, or right down at the real, bottom. For real. Debt will affect us all at some point or not. Mm, no cap. That's real tough. Thing about it is, like, when you rich, you probably gonna figure it out. You gonna get your money back. Bro just didn't wanna pay the seven thousand. I'm almost positive he got it. <laughs> ain't no oh, ain't no seven thousand is minimal. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of rich people don't be having a lot of hard cash in the bank because they're doing this and the third and this and that but like you got seven thousand <laughs> but then lord brockett calls again hey charlie i'm going to pass you back okay. to the i'll explain it it seems he now wants to negotiate if you was to settle this debt at present it would be held in our cl- in a company client account for 14 days and then that would leave everything in the flat here untouched if, if if you're successful in your winning of the case, it then gets returned. Does it get the full amount that we pay today refunded? If you win the decision, then it gets returned to you. Okay. I think um, Mrs. Hughes there is going to arrange a payment. Yes, no problem. Would you like me to pass you back over? Okay, yeah, thank you. Lord Brockett's mother-in-law agrees to pay his £7,700 debt in full. That's gone through absolutely fine. Somebody got the bridge in put back one. where it is. We're all sorted here. Thank you for your time. I do apologise. The agent's perseverance has paid off. Thanks very much for the time. Take care. So. Cheers. I think this just goes to show that he's not immune from the law. What a f- People always think they're immune to the law. I don't understand it. Like, what do you think? Like, you're not. You're not. You're not. You ain't Im- You're not immune to this debt collection. <laughs> we collecting your debt just like we collecting the poor's, is what Max told him. 
flat though with the artwork. Well, let's watch. Latest research has revealed that more than half of Britain's small and medium-sized businesses are suffering from late payments. Over 20% of firms are owed over £25,000, while 40% have experienced cash flow problems as a direct result of unpaid invoices. Small and medium-sized businesses are owed a total of 44 billion on outstanding and late payments. see next case then mate high court enforcement agents matt highway and gary ball are in coventry to recover a debt of ten thousand pounds owed by city leisure coventry limited a company which runs a local pub the watchmakers it's like it's going to be nice today isn't it? just in it the business owes the money to a contractor who carried out refurbishments in the pub, but wasn't paid the full amount of their invoice. It's not sort of lights on the inside, though. The contractor took the company to court and won. And now payment must be made in... Today. All the lights are on. No? No. The pub appears to be empty, but former publican Matt thinks on his feet. Just get to the side of that man. Who's going down? Me. Yeah, you are younger. Like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, they figured it out. This is how they load the liquor and things of that Sit. nature. Use all your armed forces skill there, mate. Get in there. It's one thing pub landlords always forget to lock a cellar drop. Always. But down in the cellar, Gary is in for a surprise. Who are you? My name's Gary Boy, High Court Enforcement. We're after City Leisure, Coventry Limited. Long gone. Long gone. Are you gone. going to come in through my cellar door? Hello, sir. Get, get out. Get out. Leisure. Get out. I'm afraid. Right, get out. Sit, sit, let's go and occupy. Okay, I'm going to film everything you're doing. How fucking dare you walk into my pub? I thought it was. Not fucking me, you ain't. The address I have. Not for fucking me, you ain't. The address I have. City Leisure, they don't occupy you anymore. Okay. Right, so get outside and I'll show you the paperwork. You can show me here now. You are? You can show me here now. What in the fucking cell? Get the fuck out of my pub. Get out of this pub now. I'll fucking call the police, you cunt. How dare you? City Leisure don't occupy you. Who's that for? City Leisure. Right, come here. After hearing the aggressive conversation, Matt quickly goes to join his colleague. Matt did. Matt came a little late though, didn't he? Get over here! <laughs> Don't show. <laughs> but the man has left the cellar. Where is he? I don't know. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, right, yeah. Right, oh, yeah. first of all, no, you settle down. No, get your hands first off of all. me. Get your settle hands yourself down. Get your hands off me. Calm yourself down. I know my rights. Do not touch me Calm yourself me again. down. I'm simple as that. Touch me again. Calm yourself down. Fucking breaking into my pub. We're here with a writ, sir. No, you're here yes, with a writ for a city leisure no, company, right? We're here for a writ occupy. with this property. Right, that is against city leisure. That company has gone into liquidation. Well, answer the door when we knock it, then. The man claims a new company now runs the pub I and that City Leisure him. Coventry Limited has been There's wound down. That doesn't but the man's reaction has raised Matt's suspicions, so he checks his case notes. What's your name, sir? My name's Steve Carvel. Your name's what, sorry? Steve Carvel. That's one of the uh, directors of the company. Mate. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter what the directors of the company are. That well, company is gone. The company's registered at this address and it's active on company's house. Okay. okay. You're a director of that company. Yes. Right. right, so why are you not dealing with the issues that it's got? Matt's notes show that Mr. Carvel is the director of the debtor company, City Leisure Coventry Limited, and that it's not gone into liquidation as he claims. Yeah. I don't know why they don't why they think they'd come with no type of paperwork research or anything. Like you could just tell these people anything and they just go, Oh, okay, my bad. Let me get up out of here. Oh, bro. And then you all flustered. Now they know you lying. You overreacting. You overdoing it. You doing too much. So we're here today for the balance of ten thousand 
765 pounds 86 pence okay if that's not paid we're going to be removing goods from the property the, today the city leisure don't own it in okay well, as far as i'm concerned they do your writ is for a, a previous occupier it's not is it it's for you no, it's, no it's you're not. Your, no, 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 your no, no, city no. leisure. Excuse me, no. Coventry. No, 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 no. That's a separate legal entity. That's a limited company. With Mr. Carvel insistent, a new company runs the pub. He shows Matt and Gary paperwork, which he thinks proves his claims. Watchmaker's leisure. Yep. From the occupier here. Yep. Insurance. Watchmaker's leisure. Non domestic rates. Watchmaker's Leisure, VAT, Watchmaker's Leisure, City Leisure and nothing to do with these premises. So I've shown you all the evidence, that's from the solicitor, that's the licence to occupy, that's Watchmaker's Leisure, what are you going to do? It appears that Mr Carvel has set up a new company, Watchmaker's Leisure, to manage the pub. If the assets have been transferred to his new company, they can't be seized, but Matt needs proof. Have you got a and that's where they normally catch him at, because it costs money to do all of that. Oh yeah, it costs money to do everything they just ran, named off, but they're like, oh man, I'm, that that be the one they be skipping every time. Like man, they ain't gonna do all that. Yes, they are. Full inventory of everything that's in the property that says it belongs to somebody else. And that's on the day that it was paid for. Ownership papers. I've seen it repeatedly. Right, this document's a year old. Yeah. It's supported by that. It's the license to occupy from the solicitors. Yeah, that's not relevant. The document is not proof that the fixtures and fittings have been legally transferred to the new business. Matt turns up the pressure. It would be fair for me to assume that assets belonging to City Leisure Coventry Limited would be here. Unless you're shown otherwise. Unless I'm shown otherwise. There you go. But I don't think I have been oh, yet. I think you have. Alright, oh, okay. Well, unfortunately, that's my judgment to make, not yours. We often get told, you know, that that business is is not active anymore. It's it's been wound up. You know, it's gone bankrupt. Whatever the uh, the argument is. Um, however, we've checked with Companies House um, to make sure that we're attending the right registered premises, to make sure that the company is active, um, and to make sure there is no winding up petition. Gotta cross all your T's and dot all your I's, man. When you're trying to play with these debts, as a, especially as a business, when you're trying to move stuff from. This LLC to this entity to this entity, you gotta do it all. You can't miss a beat. You gotta have all the paperwork or it ain't gonna work. Uh, ...against the company. With no proof that the goods belong to Mr. Carvel's new company, Gary and Matt start an inventory of assets. Do you know how many of them stores there are? One, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven. But then suddenly, Mr. Carvel seems to want to negotiate. Just so I understand, mate. Mm hmm. What's the amount that you're claiming? £10,765.86. I just want to put this to bed. Just over 10,000 quid. Because categorically it'll be empty this afternoon, you realise that, don't you? Fair enough. See what you can raise, see what you can raise. I was a publican for 15 years, so I know the score. We do have to use the High Court writ and the powers from it wisely. You know, the last thing we want to do is remove goods from a business for their employees, you know, to, to lose their jobs. However, you know, if they're not working with us to try and get this paid, that's the only course of action we do have. The agents have now been on the premises for half an hour. Mr. Carvel has managed to find a friend who is willing to help out. He was landlord's mate. Well, what kind of help? Okay, he's out the back of it. $10,000 worth of help? Yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, it's good. I'll be honest, mate, I don't think it's going to be enough. Is there anybody else that can top it up? Mate, I can put the call in for you. I, 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 don't, think, I don't think it's going to be enough, to be honest, but I can ask, I can ask the question. Is there any other avenues you can try? Nothing. I'll give him a ring and see what happens. Just give us a minute. Matt goes outside to see whether Mr. Carvel's offer is acceptable to the... I would've went outside, hit him with a fake phone call. Yeah, that ain't it. They, ain't what they needed some more, man. I, I tried for you. The claimant. I managed to speak to the uh, director who is uh, the director of City Leisure, um, and he's uh, making an offer of £2,000 today. Yes, it'll be refused, mate. You've got to try harder. If we, yes. if we came somewhere along the halfway mark... Yeah. All right, I'll have a chat with him and uh, I'll come back to you. Cheers. Matt goes back inside to break the news to Mr Carvel. The indication is that the only way that they would not remove today 
is if you got somewhere near half. See what you can do to increase on what you've what you've offered. Right, and then I'll I'll give another go. Right. Minutes later, Mr. Carvel returns with another offer from his friend. Fred. Now he's like literally clearing out his own business. He's like literally clearing himself out. Literally. It seems that a £3,000 down payment is the best Mr. Carvel can do. But, but if you don't, if you take the three, if you give 3000 and you don't pay, like, don't do that to your friend. Literally, if you don't got it, just be done. You know what I'm saying? Matt has a solution. Uh, Are you open this weekend? Yeah. How much would you take over the weekend? My mouth. Well, hey, 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 okay. Weekend. On average, six. You could pay three today, two on Monday. And then two pence and two eight. Yeah. Two eight one. Uh, 80, 81. Two eight one. Matt calls the office again to see whether Mr. Carvel's new offer will be enough to resolve the case today. Good afternoon. I've got um, uh, an offer from the defendant. Three thousand pounds today, with two thousand pounds on Monday. Okay, Monday. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, two thousand eight hundred for the uh, the week after and the week after that. He's got the three k now. He just wants the weekend to make some money so he can pay us on, on Monday. I'll uh, mail you back in a couple of minutes. I'll speak to the now. Okay, right. Cheers. Cheers. Just waiting for a call back, Steve. Okay. I've just gone to the client with it. I'm just going to wait for a call back. Okay. I mean, it is what it is. At Hello. That point. Hello, Matt. Hi, mate. Okay, I can confirm that some of the client has accepted that proposal. All right, mate. Lovely. Thank you. Thanks, John. Accepted, mate. Yeah. Cheers. Good. Oh, it doesn't worry. It doesn't worry me at all. But we'll we'll leave as mates. Don't worry. I promise you. Mr. Carvel's friend pays the three thousand pounds down payment. He's the best man this year. He is. He is the best. He's the best man today. Definitely. <laughs> W friend, man. The agents get Mr. Carvel to sign a controlled goods agreement, which lists assets on the premises. S signature there, print there with the bottom, mate. If he doesn't stick to his repayment plan, the assets will be removed. And your oh, friend loses yeah. 3000 for nothing. The case okay. is resolved for now. But if Mr. Carvel defaults, the agents will be back. Let's go, let's go. I feel like that one took a good amount of time, not even gonna hold you. Matt and Gary had to calm an angry debtor down to get a result. But in Max and Paul's next case, they meet a woman. The number of people who contacted a leading UK charity to seek help with their debts has risen by 62% over the last five years. Research has shown that nearly 15 million people in the UK have insufficient savings to live on should they fall on hard times. People who contacted a leading debt charity in 2016 owed an average of 14 bands. High Court Enforcement Agents Max Carraher and Paul Bowhill are on their way to North London to recover a debt of £18,000 owed by a recruitment consultant to a dissatisfied client. We're off to see Mrs. Roberta Grada, and we're looking to collect £17,881.87. Have we not heard of her before? The client wanted his money back after the debtor, Roberta Grade, recruited an unsuitable PA for him, and then failed to find him a replacement. He took her to court and won. Yeah, I will want my money back. So this might be an interesting job. Let's go find out. If Roberta can't or won't pay today, the agents can remove goods to offset the debt. No. Hello. Hiya. Hello, madam. High Court Enforcement. Oh, right, okay. 
Hello, Roberta. How are you? We've got a, what do I need? £17,881. Hey, Max be on, Max be on bullshit, BS. I'm telling you. He ain't had to do it like that. He could have said it like, yeah, I just need you to come to the door and we can discuss it. He, no, what do I need? I need, you know what I'm saying? He be escalating pounds. stuff. We've got a, what do I need? Seven Roberta. He was going to say the right thing at first. He feisty, bro. Why are you, he be on bull. How are you? We've got a, what do I need? £17,881.87. Do you know what all this is about? You'll also have to speak a bit closer. I'm as deaf as the doorpost. The problem we've got at the moment is that we have to come, we have to collect on the funds, or we have to enforce the writ, which is removal of goods. That's, that, that's obviously my, my job to look and see what assets we have to remove. Roberta won't open the door, so Paul posts a business card through the letterbox. There's a phone number on here. Yeah. Can you call me on it? Because it's a bit silly talking through the door. Hello? And I know I've got to pay it, okay. but I'm just unprepared to kind of beat off the £17,000 on my doorstep today. That's all, that's all it is. Okay. Well, what would you propose to pay? Tomorrow? No, I've got here you. Hang on. 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 Speak to me through the letterbox so we have no, no breakdown in communications. I'm a realist. I don't expect you to be able to pull out £18,000 out of your pocket. We need to come up with A, an arrangement, and B, I need to get something to pay off the client. We are in a really tight situation. Yeah. Like at this side of Christmas, I'm just waiting for sort of money to come in. If you say that to me, then we have no other option but to enter your property and remove goods. It's critically important to gain access to the property under a writ of control as soon as is possible and feasibly. Unless we're in the property, we can't make an assessment of the debtor's capability to pay the debt. Without access to the property, we can't even enter into the negotiations. Realising the agents... He looked fed up. By, by season five, he looked done. He like, all right. Mm -hmm. ...into the negotiations. Realising the agents aren't going to go away, Roberta finally lets them in. Sorry. You just come as a double act. She's keen to tell the agents her side of the story. I'm an, I'm an agent, so I, I found him a secretary to support him care. in his business world. But then he fired her. Right. And then wanted me to replace, which I... I and you couldn't find any well, policy well, I, I spent a year... So he's suing and, and you then, and, for yeah, what? Yeah, and then all the time he was, like, changing the goalposts and what he wanted. OK. I want someone part-time, I want someone full-time. So he made... I spent a year... So he's saying he had to hire somebody else, and that's Yeah, I owe for. him, like, a refund. I decided not to go to court to fight that because it's all his word against my word kind of thing, and I just... I don't... I didn't have any sort of... You should have went to court. That was stupid. Always at least show up to give your side of the story. Because now look at you. You want to give your side of the story to the people who don't care. It doesn't matter to them. You should have went and told the judge. Money okay. to sort of, you know, get a legal team behind me. The only option I can see at the moment if we can't get a down payment is removing a large number of goods to cover part of the debt. I mean, I could do like £150 like today. No, if that is the case, we'll, we'll have to seize goods. 150 What kind of offer was... You owed 17000 that's like throwing that's like throwing a cup of water into a lake. Or however you say it. Well what goods will you be thinking? It will be everything of value. This is a route that both my colleague and I really don't want to go down. If we get a down payment, mm. it yeah. changes the complexion. It, of it. it really changes everything. I'm so, owed so much money as well, that's the problem. Okay. I'm owed so much money. Oh god. With payment looking unlikely, Max that's goes to do a vehicle issue. check on the car parked outside the house. Hi, can I speak to somebody to do an HPI for me? Yeah, it's on finance. What are the TNCs of that finance? 60 months. Whoa. Okay, cheers. Take care, mate. Bye. With the car out of bounds, the agents look around the house for any other assets they could seize. There doesn't seem too much of any value, but the agent's actions yeah, no, no, have prompted yeah. Roberta to act. Oh, God. Let me call my husband and see what we can do. 
when people are trying to find the money, if I can see that they're making a, a conscious effort, this could be making phone calls, getting their other half on the phone, a real effort to show that they are trying to resolve this problem. If somebody sat there on the sofa saying, I can't pay this, that's a defeatist attitude. Roberta has asked her husband to call round the family to see who can help. Over. Yes. Hi, darling. Is she going to do... Oh, that's so, so... Um, she, is she going to call me on my mobile? Oh, right. did you explain to her? <clears throat> All right. Oh, that's so sweet of her. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, darling. Well, how okay, much is she giving? Bye. Right, okay, my sister's going to help. She's going to help. Oh, that's very that's encouraging. Really Roberta's sister has agreed to pay £3,000 towards the debt. It's less than a quarter of what she owes, but it appears to be her best offer. Yeah, it probably is. Max yes. goes outside to call the office to see whether the claimant is willing to accept it. Could you give me an indication as to what the client would accept as a down payment so we don't have to remove what little she has? The client would look like they want at least £4,000. At 4000 Alison, what I'll do, with, I'm still unsure if she can get it, but I'll say that 4000 is the absolute minimum that the client would take. Absolute minimum, that's what I've got on here. Okay, Alison. It's not 1000 and out. One thousand away. Four thousand pounds. Four thousand. Four thousand pounds. Roberta calls her sister directly. Darling, I'm so sorry to put you in this situation. Honestly, are you all right to sort of help out just for the payment, just for, for now, sweetie? If it could be four thousand pounds, would that be okay? All righty. Thanks so much, sweetie. Thanks, darling. Thanks a million. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Roberta's sister agrees to pay the four thousand pounds. The claimer. <sighs> this look on her face. It looks to me as if she's going to continue default on the payment plan and her sister is never going to get that 4000 back. ...has asked for. I believe you are going to help Roberta out with a down payment of £4,000 so we can solve this problem. Thank you very much for being able to help. Now Max has to set up a payment plan to clear the £14,000 balance. What can you reasonably afford so you won't default on payments? Um, you tell me. Uh, uh, would it, could it be sort of like £1,500 per month? Provisionally, I will accept that. That's yeah. a reasonable figure. That's your paperwork there. That just sums up everything you said, yeah. how much you okay, paid okay, and okay. the dates. Yeah. They're the car. Not going to lie, £1,500 is a lot. I feel like she's going to call and be like, yeah, I can give £750. Hard receipts. Okay, thank you. Take right. care. Okay, thank you so much. Take care. Okay. The case is resolved for now. But if Roberta doesn't stick to her payment plan, the agents will be back. I have no faith in Roberta. None. Zero. A recent survey has shown that almost 50% of families in the UK are struggling to make ends meet. Nearly 20% admit to being unable to cover an unexpected cost of over £100. While one in seven UK households have to cut back on food and other necessities to pay for unforeseen expenses. 800,000 families with two or more children in the UK are struggling with debt. Kids are expensive. High Court Enforcement Agents Matt Highway and Gary Ball are in Smethwick, West Midlands. To recover a debt of almost £6,000 owed in unpaid nursery fees by Linda Mkulsia and Charlie Isiora. Nursery. Who's next, somebody? Child care again. Nursery is equivalent to daycare when they say that. Right, child care. They, between them, owe £5,875.72 to a children's nursery. The debtors received government help with their childcare. Oh, okay, I was just about to ask, like, do they not receive government help for childcare in the UK? Bees directly, but failed to pass on the money to the nursery, and now they must... Fail to pass on the money, see. They shouldn't even do that. They should give it directly to the nurseries. Must pay that's, the 6000 That's how they do it in America. You need help, they give it directly to the nurseries. Pounds they owe in full today. Or schools or daycares. Or 
Hey, madam. Yeah. Looking for Linda or Charlie? Linda or Charlie? Linda Mac Lucia no. or Charlie Izuri? No, no. My name is Angel. How long have you lived here, madam? I've been living here now for a year. One year? Yeah. Okay, I'll just tell you, my name's Gary. This is uh, Mass. We're both High Court Enforcement Agents. Yeah. Here today with a High Court writ. Are you That's renting or have you bought? I'm renting. You're renting. Have you got a tenancy agreement? Uh, or no, a council tax bill? We just have a look at your identification as well, please. Yeah, okay. okay thank you. As this is the address on the writ of control, the agents have every right to stay and investigate further. Gary makes peaceful entry into the property. Madam, just a passport or a driving. There you go. Please, you can come in. We can come in. We've got a uh, high court writ. The woman shows Gary her driving license. Your angel, yeah. yeah. Is your date of birth, Angel? Yes. Is your date of birth? Oh, my date of birth is, is a... Is, is your date of birth, madam, that's, not, that's quite easy. You give me a driving licence, which is I don't think is quite real. Yeah? Uh, what, what do no, you mean? No, 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 don't <laughs> take it out of my hand. It does not look real. I didn't think it was real either. And she couldn't think of her birthday off the top of her head? No. What's your date of birth? What's my date of birth is 9th of March, 1986. That doesn't look real to me, that driving uh, licence. A bit different to mine. Anything you want to think is up to you. I'm showing you my 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 identification my. as you ask. Right now, you are really embarrassing me in my neighborhood. Where okay, I we're live. just making our checks, man. We're just doing our job, all right. To the quality of it. Presented with what looks like fake ID, the agents are now even more suspicious that Angel really is the debtor they're looking for. I ain't never seen this on this show. It's giving a fake ID. That's tough. She tried it though. Just have a quick look round, sweetie. Make sure this person's not here, okay? Matt looks for paperwork to prove his hunch. Do you know where your tenancy agreement is, madam? We can get this matter resolved. I don't have a tenancy agreement. He's. Ma'am, the one thing you don't want them to do is call the police. Because now you didn't gave false identification, fake or whatever you want to call it. And that's got to be like, I don't know, a misdemeanor, a felony, I don't know. My husband do this with everything. But then upstairs, Gary finds a bundle of letters. Hey, house, nice. That letter. It's Linda. I, An open letter. I heard letters coming here. Okay. They are all addressed to the debtor, Linda Mkulsia. So much not quite right here, is it? We used to open letters, they come You used to open other people's time. letters? Sorry? Okay. That's also illegal. Letters, they come to this house, we open there. It's a bank letter with a new pin. You Linda, madam, are you? If it's not addressed to you, you do not open that mail. It's illegal. I'm not Linda. Because in my house, right, there's letters to me and that's it. Found that new pin for a bank account, three weeks old. If you've been in this house a year, why is this lady who we're looking for still setting, sending a pin to your house then? Me, and I, you're opening it, it's in your bedside table. I, I said all the letters that come here, I used to open it. Something's not ringing through here, madam. This is becoming a joke now, it's serious. Is it? I, I don't think it's funny. Despite the evidence to the contrary, the woman is still denying she's the debtor. But then Gary spots a handbag. Uh, let's go get that real ID, Gary. Is this your bag, madam? Yeah. It is your bag? Yes. Definitely your bag. I've just found it on, on the kitchen table, yeah? Yeah. Tell me why there's a Matlan card for Linda in there, then. In the, in the bag. <laughs> She's silent. When we reveal that someone's lying to us, it puts us in a strong See, position. Uh, it opens up the defendants into realising that... You know, getting the, caught in a lie is... I, I think that's, that's always been wild to me. Like, you lying to these people's face and they catch you lying? Red-handed? It's tough. The game's up. We know who you are. Uh, time to deal with it. I think we've found the right person, haven't we? I think we have. Linda Card as well. You're back, madam. OK, so you're obviously Linda, aren't you? OK. My real name is Linda. Linda's deceit has been exposed. But will the agents be able to get the almost £6,000 they came?
Nah, she was willing to go to jail for that. False ID and all. Four. High Court enforcement agents Matt Highway and Gary Ball were in the West Midlands to recover a debt of nearly £6,000 owed by a couple for unpaid nursery fees. Hey, madam. Looking yeah. for Linda or Charlie? We can come in, madam. The woman they met denied... All right. For Linda in there. Do you want to start telling the truth? Okay. Is there any reason why you lied to us about who you are? The reason is we are no longer together. I wasn't working, so he was the one paying the bills. He was the one paying for the child school. It's not my business. Unfortunately, it is, isn't it? The child in question is yours, isn't it? Yeah, it's my, it's my child, but Hello? with our agreement, the man pays because he's the one who said, don't work, right. I'll pay everything. Right. So the easiest way for a debtor to um, avoid payment is to deny all knowledge of it, especially when it's a debt from a previous relationship because that's something that they're trying to forget about um, and move forward from. And then suddenly this, this debt from that relationship comes and bites them on the bum. Despite her claims, as she is named on the writ, Linda is responsible for the debt. So first things first, are you able to pay that amount of money? I don't have money yet. Nobody. Can anybody help you with it? Nobody have that kind of cash. Right. With Linda saying she can't pay, I the agents her. start looking around man, the man. house for assets they could seize. Is that Linda on the on the? And they're in for a surprise. Two Cartier bracelets, here, mate. Oh yeah, you got it. <laughs> Two Cartier bracelets. They must like four bands a piece, ain't they? More than that, maybe. I don't know. If they are real. They're worth thousands. We will seize those. Rolex watch. Can I see the Cartier bracelets? Like, I can tell you if they're real or not. DKNY watch. Gucci glasses. DKNY watch ain't worth nothing, but they're Roly and Cartier's. Two very lovely rings, big diamond rings. Uh, I can, I'm afraid, madam. In the bedrooms, there appear to be thousands of pounds worth of designer goods. Okay. Yeah, she was spending that money. Well, why didn't she see? These are the people, man, that be taking advantage of the government that they need to be worried about. DKMY handbag. I don't know if it's real or not. Doing the search, you know, you, you're looking out for these things of, of value. Um, you know, finding a Cartier box with, with bracelets in, finding expensive watches. It builds up a picture. Um, it builds up a lifestyle on how these people... He'll put his glasses like... like they're gonna do nothing, something. Living. There must be money going through that property. The agents list the designer items on an inventory. But even though they would have been expensive to buy, their value at auction may not clear the 5,008. Nah, that's not true. The jewelry's value is still the jewelry's value. 175 pounds she owes. Clear the 5,875 pounds she owes. But then Gary finds some vehicle registration documents. BMW, six series. Where are these BMWs, madam? You're trying to hide goods because you got a debt against you. I didn't hide any goods. I've got a car. What car? This one. It appears Linda owns one of the BMWs Gary has found. Uh, yeah, they got. They getting. They getting money. Linda out here, fresh to death. Jewelry down, Rolex. Paperwork for. Yeah. He calls the office right. for a vehicle check. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye bye. Free of finance. Mm. How much? Three thousand. The value of the vehicle would cover just over half the debt, but there's a problem. Where is this car? There is somewhere. It's somewhere. Okay. Over the rainbow. Yeah. It's pointless talking about this it's one, isn't in it? The garage for the it seems that the vehicle can't be recovered until tomorrow, and the agents are running out of options. But then Linda else. makes an offer. Okay, then. I've got a friend. She says she can have money tomorrow in cash. But anyway, hold on. Using the car as collateral, Matt. Gotta make sure the money real. 
You see what I'm saying? They forged some documents over here. Decides sure to offer Linda real. a lifeline. I'm happy to give you until tomorrow to pay this. I'll do what's called a controlled goods agreement. The agents put the car and the luxury items on a controlled goods agreement, which means they control her goods, but she can keep them in the house. OK, Linda, if you just sign there and print there... Yeah, they nice. If Linda doesn't pay the £5,875 she owes within 24 hours, the agents will be back to seize the goods. Taking goods is always a last... She's going to try to hide them, but then she's going to get arrested. Resort in enforcement, that's not, not what we're there to do. Um, it's, it's a pain for everybody involved. We use different forms of leverage. The shortened version of leverage is levy. That's what bailiffs do, they levy on goods. Um, so, you know, we, that's what we use. We use the car, the boat, the plane, whatever it may be. Thank you, Linda. And there's your cards there, Linda. We're in your bag, all right? Are the Thank you. Plan. Cheers, Linda. Nice home, nice cars. I don't know nice where to go with that one, mate. Outfits, yeah, she wasn't nice fucking cool, was she? So, if she doesn't pay tomorrow, we'll seize the car and we'll come back and get all them, all that jewellery. Oh, OK. All right, they paid it. W Fiance. Wow, she kept up with the 1500 My bad, Roberta. Oh, okay, they at least got the money. Lord Brockett got a stay and appeal to have the case set aside. The application was dismissed and the claimant was paid the following day. they had on hold. Alright, everybody got paid this episode. Not too negative. All in all, be decent.